Hey, welcome back to Cash Keyboards. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Newman GM326. I got this on Black Friday for $17. It says it's 75% hot swappable mechanical keyboard, uh, which caught my attention. Of all the things that I ordered from Keebs for All, Keeb Monkey, Dan Keebs, uh, never forget the Amazon for the weird purchases and the weird finds. Looking at the box, it's pretty nondescript. Gives you a little bit of information on the keyboard. It says gaming because, you know, we're for gamers. Open the box. We have a bit of foam on the sides. We're going to slide out the keyboard. Uh, the foam is actually just side pieces. But again, $17, so I'm not looking for a great unboxing experience. As long as it came here in one piece, which it did. So that's good. We have a manual. It's a pretty small one. It pretty much only has RGB instructions on how to adjust them or change them. Came with a detachable USB-C cable, which was a surprise. Um, it, it seems like a pretty nice cable. It's really thick. And that leaves us to the keyboard. This is white on white. Uh, it looks pretty clean. Feels pretty good. All right, taking a closer look. Uh, it's a really nice looking keyboard. It's kind of lightweight, um, but I'm not expecting a really premium feel for the price we paid. Flipping over to the back, we do have uh, dual stage feet, which is nice. You can adjust the small ones or the large ones, depending on the angle you like to type or use the keyboard in. Now let's take its keycap off and check out the keycaps and what switches are in here. Keycaps are your standard plastic. They're pretty thin, but they don't actually seem very low quality. They seem decent for the price we paid. And it looks like we have a red switch. Uh, these are Jixian switches, if I'm saying that right. Um, I've never really used Jixian or heard of Jixian. So let's go ahead and grab our switch puller. We'll take one out, let's take a look at it. Right, pulling it out, it looks like your standard red switch. It's linear, it feels like linear. But we'll go ahead and set that aside. We'll talk about it later. And looking at the hot swap socket, it looks like you can see the north facing RGB. And with that, we'll go ahead and get these keycaps stripped off and dive into this keyboard. Okay, now the keycaps are off. We can see the switches. Looks like there's a poly plate, which is pretty cool to see. Looks like there's some nice flex on the board, which feels pretty good. Uh, the knob casing comes off. The black knob does come off. You just need to pry it off. I made a mistake thinking there was a cutout there and I shot the knob across the room when I separated it from the case. So don't be like me. All right, next step, we're gonna go ahead and pull our switches out and dive into this board. Okay, switches are out. Now we're just gonna inspect it, take a look around, look for any screws or anything that's gonna be holding this case together. Also gonna look at the stabs real quick. They do just seem to have a little bit of lube on them. They're not really lubed, but we'll address that later. Might just add a little bit of dialectic grease to it. Confirming no screws, it looks like we're just going to take a pry tool and go around the edges of the board and we'll pry it up and off.
Notice here, that's where I lose the knob across the room, confirming that that is not a cutout. But if we just pry forward and up a little bit, all of the case comes off. Got the knob. It was impact across the room. And here you can see that even though it looks like there's slits around it, so it pops out. If you look at the back, there's no slits. It doesn't come out. So remember, take the knob off. Okay, now we're just gonna lift the PCB and the plate out of the case. It comes out in one piece. I was assuming it was pressed in, uh, but it's actually not. There are screws in this. So we're gonna flip over to the back of the PCB, grab our electronic screwdriver and get these separated. Okay, now they're separated. We'll just inspect the board, make sure it looks good, see if there's anything we need to be worried about or take note of while we're building this or putting it back together, I should say. Uh, looking at the plate, it does feel pretty good. It looks like the tolerances are really tight. Um, also checking the stabs, uh, they're pretty secure. There's little to no wobble or rattle. And now we'll move on to these switches. These are Jinxian switches. Looking online, there's like no information on them. They appear to be Otamu style switches and they are red linear, but for force and grams and any information other than that, there's really nothing online about them. They seem to be a lot easier to work with than Otamu's. Their tolerances aren't as tight, which makes separating them a lot easier. When I'm separating these switches, I use a glorious switch opener. It's pretty much the only one I found that has a separate side for Otamu style switches. For this build, we're gonna stick with these switches, uh, but let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a future build where I pull these out and put something like KTTs or Akos or Bisons in them since those are switches that also fit Otamu style sockets. Now when lubing, I like to always say, lubing is like a ninja. It's there in the shadows, but you don't see it. So you want to use a very small amount. For linears, you can pretty much lube the entire inside of the switches. I don't touch the metal contacts with both posts on the sides around the center and in the, in the stem hole. So just go ahead and use a light amount in there and you'll be good to go. Some people also with the Jixian switches, some people claim that they're scratchy or they didn't like the way they felt or they felt inconsistent. That's not so in my case, but mileage may vary. As always, we're gonna bag lube our springs, we're drop our springs in a little plastic bag. We're gonna use 15 drops of super lube and give it a shake for a few minutes and those will be good to go. All right, and once everything is all looped up and put back together, we're gonna to switch back over to our PCB and our plate. We're gonna go ahead and put our plate back on our PCB so we can begin the tape mod and reassembling this board. Something I noticed with this board when screwing back together, there was a lot more holes for screws than I had screws for. 
Uh, so I just stuck to the outside edges and one in the center um, and made sure it felt even. That was the best that I could do, but take note, if you are taking this apart and you want them to go back in their respective places, make sure you know where those are. Okay, and then we apply some painter's tape or masking tape to the back. I did two layers for this one, and then we'll just trim the edges to make it all look nice. Okay, and moving back to the case. For the case, we're gonna use EVA foam. This is two millimeters thick EVA foam since we don't have a lot of room in here. Uh, there's other things you can use, um, but I really like EVA foam because it's easy to work with. So just make my notches, align my cuts, and we're good to go. Okay, EVA foam is in there, and we're just going to put the PCB and the plate back in, align it all up, make sure it looks good. All right, switch time. So we'll go ahead and add our switches back in. This is a slower process. Be careful because there's not a lot of room for air here. You want to put them as straight down as possible so you don't bend any pins. I did notice that the plate is such tight tolerances that sometimes the plate was pressing down and getting the switch stuck. So I just used a little pry tool to make sure that the plate stayed stable while I was inserting switches. I didn't have to use it on the whole board and once I got enough switches in, the, the plate stayed stable. But just a note. Okay, it looks like everything's all lined back up. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the top of our case and snap everything back into place. Once we snap everything back into place, I like to just run my fingers around the edges to make sure there's no extra clicks that need to go in place. Make sure all your tolerances are lined up and look good and you're good to go. Okay, don't forget to put your knob back on, including the black piece. Uh, but yeah, and then you just use the cap over top of it. And then like before, I said the stabs felt pretty good. There wasn't any rattle or a lot of movement. They had a little bit of grease on them, but we're gonna go ahead and add just a touch more of dielectric grease, just a little dab. You can do this with an angled syringe. You can inject it straight onto the bar. But remember, you just need a little bit in there if they're already being grease. Finally, we'll move on to the keycaps. These were another Black Friday sale. These are from a company on Amazon called VK Proe. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, they seem really, really nice. They were themed after the Famicom, which, you know me, I love retro gaming, so this was a win for me. These are $10. I think they're still on sale right now. Uh, they're XDA PBT. Uh, they're really, really thick. They feel really good. The legends are clear. Everything's aligned really nicely. 
So this was kind of a win, bringing this entire keyboard build to about $27, which is pretty amazing. Now a couple of notes, the polling rate for this keyboard is about 125 hertz, which is pretty low uh, in the gaming world. Although I didn't see any effects in things like Fortnite or Valorant or Apex, uh, some people have noted that they can really feel it in games like that or Osu. Um, but I guess to each their own, still at $27, it's pretty amazing and worth a shot if you're in the market for a new keyboard, especially if you're not doing any intense gaming. Hey, thanks for watching. All the products in this video are linked down below in the description box. And if you could leave a like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Have a good day.